Welcome back. It's not every day that we got three Republicans at our table, including two who served in it Congress. Maybe the last day. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so tonight, uh, yeah, exactly. I don't, Dominic, uh, no, okay. So tonight, we are looking for a little insight here when it comes to the strategy. Um, and let's start with first Le Grand Orange. Uh, I want you to take me inside the mind here, um, Chris, of uh, John Boehner. Uh, from, we've seen clearly the man is conflicted between what he'd like to do and what he feels constrained to do by the Tea Party wing of the party. Is there a certain point where he just says, you know what, take away the speakership if you gotta. This is the right thing to do. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm not saying agree with the president, but I'm saying bring it back so that uh, the lunatic fringe doesn't take him off the cliff. A government shutdown is one issue, not paying your debt is another. Uh, I hope in the end he says, guys, I'm willing to go to this point, to this point, but I'm going to put the bill out on the floor on the debt ceiling. You can vote against it, but don't prevent me from bringing it to the floor. And if Democrats want to pass it, and a few Republicans, be my guest. Do you think getting yeah. it done is his greater concern or keeping his speakership is his greater concern? Oh, at this I, point? I think that he would be willing to give up his speakership. Really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, and, you know, I'm not sure that he would be running again. Uh, I don't ha necessarily have that sense. Uh, but he has, he has a group of people, obviously, that are incredibly difficult. But they're not the majority of the party. And I think there will be some Republicans in the end who say, John, you just got to do this. My, yeah. my experience with uh, Speaker Boehner is that he is a smart, uh, honorable, and, and principled man. And he gets along uh, well has, with Clinton. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. And he has said, and I will not take things to the floor when we fight, unless I know I've got 218 votes. Uh, and a lot of times, that is very difficult. But even when he thinks he has it, even he walks out when he thinks he's got a deal. He's lost a few. Yeah. Right. Yes. Now, now the, the only, the last time that, that I was in direct negotiations uh, uh, with him uh, would have been a very problematic for his 218. Yeah. I said, I need the Sandy support. He said, I promised you guys Peter King and myself and, uh, and others, uh, that I would deliver on this. We are not going to get close to 218. But I think I can deliver 40 votes. This is very difficult for me, and he did. And he got it done, and he put it through, and we got the Democrats all came. I'm curious, what did you think when you, when you heard the number 40? I mean, our area was underwater. I mean, who, who could vote against giving relief? You lost a home, didn't you? I mean, yeah. uh, but, <laughs> but you saw constituents who obviously, whose lives were destroyed. I mean, can what I, do you say I, to somebody well, who says, come it, on? It, yeah, now, this is yeah. part politics, too. The, the reason only 40 Republicans or so came across is that's all that we needed. So many of them who are running on uh, budget responsibility said, which way is the vote going to go? I'm not needed. But you knew I'll you go. couldn't get the, the 218. Oh, that was I mean. a foregone conclusion. But, but he let there be a vote. That's he the, let there yeah. be a vote. Even he, though he, he brought didn't, it up. Even he though he didn't have 218. Yep. And that's kind of the, the point. I but don't fault can, him for it, but I, I just can I'm I get, shocked still. Don't, that, don't, that's don't be shocked. can do on Sandy. No, this, this is what, where I think we do a disservice to the public. At least try to understand why some voted no. The Senate piled it up with so much garbage that some people said, you take out the Senate stuff, it has my vote. You leave it in, it doesn't. And, and I can that understand their position. Yeah. But, but that couldn't be done in a timely way. I yeah. understand that. So, and I mm -hmm. don't fault you or anyone yeah, for well. voting for it, but I'm just trying to say, and I would have voted it, for it, but I would have voted for it feeling pretty bad yes. that so much <laughs> crap was stuck in it. Yep. Ted Cruz. Unrelated um, to Sandy Hook. Absolutely right. Give me, uh, obviously we saw what happened last night into this morning with the whole filibuster. At the end of the day, um, I thought after 12, that the appeal um, for him um, and others to follow him would have waned a little bit. Uh, take me in the mind, because you served with a lot of uh, the Tea Party well, class that came in. Mr. Cruz came in, I went out. No, but you so served I, I with the Tea Party freshman class, but, or a lot, some uh, of them. Uh, uh, yes. Is it, are they really drinking the Kool-Aid, or some feel they're in a box right now where they say, well, I ran on this. Now that I'm here, I know it doesn't make a ton of sense, but I got to keep doing it. Well. Both uh, uh, Boehner and Cantor spend a lot of time bringing them over, and they've been very successful. What many of them have to worry about, 
uh, in very Republican areas, these are our 20s and plus, uh, is somebody running to their right. So that, that's a purity test. And the talk radio guys are ruthless in, in beating them up if they ever vote uh, off uh, uh, the uh, strict uh, yeah. ideology. Do they, do they so lose in all of this if Obamacare stays on the books or if they can't shut the government down? No, that, that, that wouldn't be uh, a factor. But I, I'm trying to get you into their, their mindset. Yeah, they are worried about people running on their right, which would make maybe matters a little worse in, in that they're inflexible. The leadership is working very hard to get them back into the, uh, into the reality. Politics is practical. That's not ideology, right. and, and the president's ideology is often not practical. Obamacare is not practical, but we have to get back into a practical world. And then it comes, Tom, to... Um, the mind of the moderate Republican right now. Um, we've heard a few spoke out and said, guys, whether you like it or not, um, it's not going to get defunded. Uh, McCain and many others said this, and they went through the process and they say, this is time we don't have to waste on this. Let's move on. I don't like it either, but this isn't the right way to go about doing it. Policy, politics, uh, procedure. My only point is you've been pretty vocal on a couple issues, social issues, that the party um, needs to at least move more um, uh, to the Reagan era, uh, a part of the, uh, go back at least to the times. Where do you see this thing going? Well, I mean, I think that this is a big test for our party going forward. Um, and I say, put I, it in the mind almost of somebody you know quite well, I know people very close, Chris Christie and Jeb Bush and those kind of people that are being considered or considering a run in 16 to be your standard bearers as a party. They got to look here and try and navigate to say, how much do I have to concede to the Ted Cruz, if at all? Um, and how much do I say, this country's in the middle. It's always in the middle. It's not to the far left. It's not to the far right. Does somebody almost like a Christie who just has to say, screw it, I'm going to go right at the Rand Pauls if I'm going to win? You know, I, I, I think that the, the, the people who win in this, for, first of all, if you're a Christie, if you're a Jeb Bush, you don't want to get involved in this fight. I mean, this is a, a congressional fight. It's none of your business. You're a governor. Go take care of your, your, your yep. problems at home, et cetera. But I think that, uh, you know, as Congressman Turner said, you know, you need to separate the guys who are the, the, the House members who have a, a very small constituency that they have to play to with the fear of, you know, somebody on the right running against them. And, and they are going to continue always be the flamethrowers, the guys who love the red meat, et cetera, et cetera. That, that's never going to change. But <laughs> we do need a party where the Christie's and the Jeb Bushes, the, the, the statesmen of our party need to be more vocal in, in, in making America as a whole recognize that there are other voices out in our party. Because right now you only see a Ted Cruz uh, who people perceive to be somehow representative of my party. And he's not. You know, I have this fight daily with Republicans across the country because you have social media now. You know, we should be running Sarah Palin for president. We should be running Ted Cruz. I mean, people who couldn't win a presidential election if, if you know, they Mickey Mouse post, ran as yeah. the Democrat. Uh, it sounds he, like you're describing a leadership vacuum. Does that mean that somebody needs to fill that vacuum? You know, the, the problem is, is that, listen, the Democratic Party went through that. The Republican mm -hmm. Party went through it. Is that there are so many people in my party who still think that Ronald Reagan is somewhere to be found in a closet somewhere. But he is couldn't that, be elected right so the answer is Well, yes. no, see, I disagree with that. You know, the, the, the problem is, is that, listen, the, the, every presidential election presents an opportunity. The opportunity is a personality uh, like uh, Chris Christie, somebody like Jeb Bush. Now, now the only problem that Jeb Bush has is the Bush name. If you took that away, he's a very smart, well thought of guy who, who carried Florida, beloved down there, would do very well with the Hispanic vote, something that I've said for a long time, we need to do in the future of this country. So the question is, is who is the person, is there the next person who steps up in 2016? I don't think it's Rand Paul. I, I don't think he would be the guy to carry us into our new generation. I, don't, I certainly know it's not Ted Cruz, but right now is the time for, there's an opportunity for some Republican somewhere to yeah. be the person to, to get everybody together. 
We'll sound off at home on this, guys. Um, just go over to Twitter and Facebook and answer the question. And it uh, you can speak to Obamacare, whether it ought to be defunded, um, even uh, if this fight leads to or some... Improved. Or improved. Or uh, improved. Use that one, absolutely. And also talk about some things we talked about here. What kind of leadership um, options might even change some of this dialogue? All right. When we come back, an issue. And frankly, it's a part of the media uh, that struggles with this one as well. It all relates to revealing too much. New tapes of the Navy Yard shooter hunting his victims. They've been released right now, but was this really a public service? And what when the question gets even tougher? We'll get into that after this.